Think for a moment of all the different ways that different people refer to you. You're probably called a variety of different names, depending on the situation. For example, in a formal situation, you might be announced by your actual given name. Michael, Michael Aloysius, Aloysius, Thaddeus, Hercules, Hercules dude. dude. Congratulations, son. In a more familiar situation, perhaps running into an old friend, your name might not be quite so long. Dude! Dude! How have you been, dude? Good to see you! Or perhaps a very specific greeting and tone for a particular situation. Mr. Dude, we are ready for your root canal now. See, you're the same person, but your name takes on different forms depending on the situation. That's the way it is with linear equations. The same equation can take on many different forms depending on the situation. The formal way of writing an equation is in standard form. Standard form is AX plus BY equals C, where A, B, and C are integers. A is positive, A and B can't both be zero, and A, B, and C have no common factors. All linear equations can be written in this form. It's also a convenient form for finding X and Y intercepts. Substitute zero in for Y and solve for X. That's the x-intercept. Replace the x with zero and solve for y. That's the y-intercept. That's the standard form of an equation, but it's not the only form. Probably the most familiar form of a linear equation is our old friend, the slope-intercept form. In this form, you can read the slope and y-intercept right from the equation. This is very helpful when you're trying to graph the line, since you know the starting point on the y-axis, and you know the rise and run that will lead you to the next point. Also, these values are important in understanding real-world applications as they signify the rate of change and initial values of situations. The slope-intercept form is probably the most recognized form of an equation, but there is another. It's called the point-slope form. It is actually derived from the formula for finding the slope. Slope equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. If we know the slope, m, and one of the points, x1, y1, on the graph, but the other point is unknown, we'll replace the y2 with the open variable y, and the x2 with the open variable x. Now, multiply both sides by the denominator x minus x1. And we arrive at y minus y1 equals m times the quantity x minus x1. That's the point slope form of an equation. This form of the equation is valuable in a very specific case. When you know the slope of a line and one point through which the line passes, Let's say you know the slope of a line is 2, and the line passes through the point 7, 9. You can write the equation of the line in point-slope form by replacing the m with 2, the x1 with 7, and the y1 with 9. The equation of the line is y minus 9 equals 2 times x minus 7. But that's not the only way this equation can be expressed. It could also be written in slope-intercept form or in standard form. To change the equation from point-slope form to slope-intercept form, we can use the distributive property on the right-hand side. We'll add 9 to both sides. y equals 2x minus 5. Our equation that was in point-slope form is now in slope-intercept form. We could also write it in standard form. 
Take the equation in slope-intercept form and subtract 2x from both sides to get both variable terms on the left. Then, multiply each term by negative 1, which will change all the signs. The result is 2x minus y equals 5. The equation is now in standard form. If we graph this equation using the point-slope form, plot the point 7, 9. Then draw a line with a slope of 2 through the point. If we graph with the slope-intercept form, find the y-intercept of negative 5, and draw a line with a slope of 2 through that point. And if we graph using standard form, set x equal to 0 and solve for y. Then set y equal to 0 and solve for x. That gives us the two intercepts, 0, negative 5, and 5 halves 0, and connect them. Notice all three equations give us the same line. So, given a slope and a single point, we were able to write the equation in point-slope form as well as slope-intercept form and standard form. A popular coffee shop chain that owned a number of stores decided in 1990 to expand the company by selling franchises nationwide. The owner decided that they would expand by 110 new stores per year. Now, in 2005, the 15th anniversary of the expansion, the company had 1,705 shops in operation. And using this information, we can write an equation that represents the company's growth. The information we have tells us the rate of change of the size of the company, namely 110 stores per year. That'll be the slope of our equation. The information about the size of the company in 2005 is a single point, 15, 1,705. Now notice we don't use 2005, but instead we use 15 for the number of years after 1990. Now, since we know the slope and a point, we can substitute this information into the point-slope form. m is 110, x1 is 15, and y1 is 1,705. So our equation in point-slope form is y minus 1,705 equals 110 times x minus 15. But that doesn't tell the whole story. If we take this equation and rewrite it in slope-intercept form, we see the slope of 110, that's the number of shops per year that the company is opening, but also the y-intercept of 55. That's the number of stores at year zero, meaning that in 1990, when the company decided to expand, it had 55 stores. And we can show all of this graphically. Using the information from point slope, our graph with slope 110 passes through the point 15, 1705. But as the slope intercept form shows, the line passes through 55 on the y-axis. This graph shows the growth of the coffee shops from the beginning, 1990, through 2005 and beyond. So, there are many different ways of expressing an equation, each one having its own advantages based on the situation. When you know the slope of a line and one point, you should use the point-slope form because that will allow you to write an equation of the line easily. That equation can then be turned into other forms. Learn the point-slope form along with those other forms, and your success in writing equations will be grande.